Hey everyone, I'm Will with Evoke. And I'm uh, Landry, we're coaches, and we're going to walk you through each stage of Gila and provide you with course details, race breakdown, tactics, um, and even some training sessions that will help get you ready for tour of the Gila. Stay tuned. Hope you enjoy. All right, so this is stage four, the Gila Monster Road Race. Landry has done this race before, and we've got his file from 2015 so we're gonna we're gonna get a little nostalgic and look back at his time doing this race of note this is the amateur course um which has a little bit different than the uci course so if you want to see the uci course it's over on the Gila website we're just going to talk about the amateur course for today landry tell me your experience with this course oh man got me nostalgic i mean this this particular day was definitely like this is the first time I did this race. It was one of the, the funnest like stages I've ever done. Um, and it was such a good feeling like finishing the stage as well and finishing the whole week of racing. So yeah, I mean, usually by the time you get to this stage, there's a little bit of fatigue in the legs and kind of the GC order has been established. So there can be some interesting tactics that play out. Um, so as you can see here on the power profile, you've got kind of those rollers that you would have ridden the other direction on the first stage um, and then into the valley. So all these roads you'll have already seen on the first stage. So you'll kind of know what to expect. Um, and really and truly, there's two ways to play this depending on where you are in the GC and also like what your strengths are. So if you want to give yourself the best chance of winning, um, and you're not in GC and you know you're not the best climber, the best way is to try to get in the early break. And I've and people will think you're, I think it was, it might have been this actual year. Um, there was a guy who was 10 minutes down on GC and we knew he wasn't the best climber and he just like sent it on one of the first climbs and we all thought he was crazy. And then he was solo for a while. And then I think a couple other guys attacked and bridged up to him and they were they got minutes on us because everybody else all the gc guys were were trying to save their energy for that last climb and i i think they maybe got caught by a couple of people from our group but that guy ended up finishing like third on the stage and i think he got himself back into like top 10 gc or something like that so you know, if you're not in GC and you go in the early break, there, there is a chance that you could stay away um, depending on how much leash they give you. So I know if the people who are in GC are going to be watching each other and they're going to want to save their energy for that last climb. So uh, if you can get away and you're willing to roll the dice, I would recommend trying that. Um, and then, I mean, if you're in GC... It's all about the last uh, 20 miles of the stage once you hit the Sapio. Um, so you really need to be prepared for that decisive Sapio climb. It's, uh, it's around 7 8%, probably take 15 to 20 minutes to get to the top. And I mean, if you got the legs, <laughs> you're going to do well. And if you don't, you're going you're gonna to be out the back. There's really no hiding. Um, huge, huge thing is going to be staying fueled for that last climb not only on the stage itself but the entire week because i've had it happen where i didn't do a good job of staying fueled the whole week and i was already like low on energy before the last stage even started and so just the whole week eat, eat as much carbs as you can and stay fueled and once you get to that last 20 miles there's really not going to be much opportunity to eat so the whole first 50 miles is just about saving energy and staying fueled. Um, and if you do that and you've got the fitness, um, you're probably going to do pretty well on that last climb. Um, what do you think about training for this stage? What would you recommend? Yeah, this stage, you cannot fake your way into a result on. You've got to be able to climb really well. That Sapio ascent is super difficult. Coming through the valley, yeah, it's also the whole the whole stage will just beat you up and then you've got to be able to climb after you've been fatigued. I've come into the base of that climb in a breakaway with like a 4 minute gap before, um like maybe even more. And then they just 
engulfed us so quickly because we were all super tired and fatigued. Um, so saving energy, yes, yeah, specifically before that or having enough of a gap into that climb is going to be a big deal. So really be honest with yourself and like try to train for climbing. Um, if you want to do well on the stage, that finish with that huge climb is really hard. And it's like rolling up top here. Um, so like keep in mind that like once you get over that sapio climb you still have some you still have got some <laughs> stuff to go through and there's like a nice curvy descent through this it's not super it's not super steep but it is uh it's something you've got to keep your your brain occupied and uh you've got to keep pressure on the pedals throughout that too mm. and then you can't forget at the end that it's going to kick up and if you're with people like this little kick at the end what what is the percentage on that? Um, three point three percent for like two miles, and then at the very end, it's got a good kick as well. Um, so you've got to keep that in mind. At the end, it's oftentimes like a climber sprint, so like a slow motion sprint <laughs> of fatigued guys. So you're gonna have to save as much energy once you get over that as you can. But it is really a climber's course, and is often the most decisive course of Tour of the Gila it is oh, yeah. savage oh yeah you can i mean you could you really can steal the show on gc on this stage if you've got the legs because um i remember one year there was a guy who was in yellow the whole week and he just cracked on this last stage i don't know if he bonked or what happened but he cracked on the last climb and like wasn't even in top 10 by the end of the day um <laughs> so it ain't over one way or the other if you do well on this stage you could really get a good result and you could vault yourself up the gc and you could just as easily lose it so uh, a couple other training tips that i would have for this is potentially try and do um, a three four day training block and then on that last day like simulate this course do some ftp efforts or some vo2 max at the end of the ride Fatigue. get used get used to what it feels like to go hard when you are tired um and i think so much of that's just mental um it feels totally different going hard when you're fresh versus when you're fatigued so late in the day efforts um are going to be crucial for this absolutely thanks landry this is stage four the gila monster hope you enjoyed that if you're interested in more info from us Get in touch with us. Landry's going to tell you how to do that. Just head over to our website, evoke.bike. That's E-V-O-Q dot bike. And we have tons of content there, loads of blog content. If you want to get in touch with us, my email is Landry at Evoke Bike and Will is Will at Evoke Bike. Uh, we've also got YouTube, podcast, um, anything that you need to help get you faster. So go on and check that out. Thanks, everyone. See ya.